book, so mm. I have that for you. Mm, she's beautiful there. Wonderful. Yeah, that's 1986, huh? Yeah. See, she, she has such an angel face, and she has workman's hands, huh? That's rather interesting. I noticed that when I first met her. We'd like to ask you to describe your first meetings with my Zetterling. But I don't remember. That's all right. That's a good beginning, isn't it? What do you remember first? <laughs> well, I remember her face, her nice face, which is so unforgettable. But my memory is not very good. And uh, I think she came to stay here so for some nights, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe she told she told other people and they told you where she stayed in Paris. I don't know. She said she stayed here. Oh, well, then obviously she did. Did she, you were her point de chute? Point de chute, Blended. yes. What is that in English, point de chute? Crash or pad. What? Crash pad. <laughs> That's tragic. I like point of shoot better. <laughs> Crash is really tough, huh? Yes, it shoot is. Shoot can be like for a flower or a leaf or something. But yes. Crash pad, that's a lovely name. You see, I learned something. <laughs> Never too late. <laughs> no, I, I, we got along very well, but I, it, when I was thinking of your coming, I thought, what can I say about her, my God? I know she, her bag was tremendously heavy. She had, but many girls now have very, very heavy bags. I don't know what, they carry everything with them. I mean, cameras, phones, of course, and other things that you can't tell. I know that she had a, and that I remember so well, she had a, a hand mirror to check her coiffure, which didn't have to be checked because it was very simple. And she had, she had a hand mirror that was silver and sort of art nouveau. And it was about this big, in her bag, in her handbag, imagine and that just was so funny to me and so unpractical, yet she looked very practical and tough. And that was just to show that she probably enjoyed looking at her face. <laughs> she had rights to be enjoy. I think my heart is rouge before, but I'm not sure. For it's me, it's a whole a period work. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Moncure Rouge, she played Nietzsche. Yes. Was this uh, your choice then? Oh, well, of course. Of course. And, and, and I, it was, um, to me, it was a, a privilege to have her play it and, and also a, a sort of clin d'oeil, I mean, a, a wink at her brains because, uh, well, she had good brains <laughs> and so did Nietzsche. <laughs> So, and besides, she had that strong face that uh, he had. I don't know what color were his eyes. Can you tell us something about the Demoiselle Oiseau in terms of uh, it being a film within a film? And uh... I, uh, there's a wonderful saying of Madame de Stael, I don't know who she if you know who she was. She was a great writer, and she was uh, of Swiss origin. And she talked about one lover she had, and she said, la parole n'est pas son langage. <laughs> that would be my excuse for not being able to tell more about it. And la parole n'est pas son langage means, you know, uh, talking words are not his language which is a rather naughty saying to te speak about a lover. You see? <laughs> you understand that, don't yes. you? <laughs> I like that very much. La parole n'est pas son langage. They communicated in other things than words. With gestures, I suppose. <laughs> voilà. So my, my mind is the same. I, I'm not a very good speaker. And uh, I can answer some questions, but, but um, by now I have very little memory, so voila. What else can I tell her, tell you? And you heard some people tol talk to you about her love life? Well, we've had some talk about her love life, but we would 
we would welcome more if you could. Well, the little I know, because I, I met him, was that she had a love affair. I don't know if it's a day or a year or whatever, but with Tyrone Power. And Tyrone Power was my idea of a very beautiful man. So I thought she was she must have been happy. And you knew this uh, about her yes. when you met her. Yeah. Yes, but that's all. And she, uh, well, we are actually more concerned about her thinking that you mentioned. Well, then she's written how many books? I don't even know that. Four or five. You see? So I think you can answer better than I can. Yes. I, 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 I don't know. I know that she was, it was wonderful that she should, but that's my opinion, but it's obvious that she was interested in very many forms of art, if she could write and film and act. I mean, that's very, it's very rare to be able to do those three things well. Huh? So it's obvious, it's not my memory, it's my uh, reasoning that's at work. And you have, you have a similar background in terms of no. fashion and film? Well, different, yes. I, I, I'm very happy that I did different uh, types of work, and uh, I think working is uh, deeply, basically, uh, the, thing, uh, the same in every job. I mean, the things that are important, the being constant, being attentive, uh, and being getting out of the work and looking at it from a distance. And that's the same from any job, even, uh, I would say... Uh, the skills are transferable, yes, they are. Okay. So, uh, so it, I felt that I was moving forward and not uh, flittering about when, when I changed jobs. Of course, I was from a journalistic family, so it was very easy for me to start working at 17 in a newspaper, and I enjoyed it very much, and after 10 years I had to move on, and uh, I wanted to move on and wanted to be not telling about other people, but I had the feeling that I could do things myself more closely, so I was in fashion and then film. But she she was in in different tasks that were more, more the, not more the same, but more coherent one with the other. More closely related. Hmm. She became a filmmaker after being a star, yes. Observing films being made, yes, and being in the making of them. Exactly. So it was a very steady path, and she was very famous, which was I, I never was. A little bit in fashion because people can be very easily known in fashion because <laughs> there are labels on clothes and <laughs> there are photos in the newspaper and everything. I was. Uh, considered a good designer and I, I don't think many people consider me a good filmmaker. I'm sort of uh, on the side. I mean, some people love my films, luckily, but uh, not like my, who made very, I think, very successful films, which is not my case. And so you were aware of her career as an actress? Oh, yes. When you, when you met her? Yes, oh, yes. Well, I think she spoke about it. Quite, uh, and I saw films where she was in, but I don't remember them. I'm sorry. Sure. Yeah. And she, um, although she did make three or four feature films in the '60s, prior to you, the films that you made with her in the mid '70s, she spoke of her most famous film, Les Girls, The Girls, as being a disaster. Well, it was a great film. I liked it. I saw that. I remember I loved it. Did you see it? Uh, you, you, you saw it at some point. You know, I know. You know. I know I saw it. And I, and I know I liked it. But that film was unappreciated in the beginning. It was made in the 60s. Mm. And it wasn't until the early 70s that mm. it... Well, have you noticed that things, a lot of creation, creative work takes a lot of time to, to blossom. It, uh, it's only the people who can look at the buds or the small flowers who detect that there's talent in something. As a matter of fact, I have faith that some of my films will blossom when I'm dead. <laughs> it's one of my uh, happy thoughts. <laughs> mm. 
but I think she'll she'll always be there. I mean, her work will always be there and, and appreciated more and more. That seems to be the case. Mm, I think I'm sure that she's not forgotten. No, of course but not. But rather keeps resurfacing. So many people are easily shocked with everything. I mean, as long as you're out of the out, just on the edge of the road, they don't get it, or they they like to be very comfortable usually seeing a film and. Uh, that's not what we ask of films that we enjoy, I think. And when I made the films, I thought the only thing I can do is be sincere and not worry if it's uh, going to earn money or not. And I think that um, I th I'm not sure we talked about film that way with my, but I, I think she really privileged her sincerity more than the idea of making money. And, of course, she had probably money being a star and everything, so she didn't have that look on film for... And now there's so many people who just have the idea of making money that they're willing to be a traitor to themselves, almost, to, to make the film so that it, the, the spectators will like it. And that's... I, I thought, no, no, you, you're coming in late and you have to do what you want to do because being sincere in the world of filmmaking is very rare. So that's what I tried to do. Do you think it's more rare today? Uh, I don't want to be pessimistic. I'm a born optimist. But... <laughs> yes, she... When you made... Uh, do you remember when you made that film that she actually spoke three languages in the film, Swedish, English, French? Now, if I was conceited, I would say I asked her, but I don't remember. But I love, I love the idea, and when you say that, it feels familiar. So maybe she did it for the fun of it, and maybe I asked her. I, can't, I, I, I want to be fair to both of us, was so I can't tell. But I loved the la languages, and I love people uh, speaking different languages in a film. It worked, too. <laughs> because in some... Well, it gives a, a three-dimension uh, sound, and that's beautiful, isn't it? And in some places, she said the same thing in the three different languages. Yeah, well... So it, it, as I say, it might maybe her idea, it may be mine. I can't tell you, and I don't want to be too unfair to her. I wish she were here to answer. She'd be much better than I <laughs> Ah. I went to her country house, you know that. That's where I met her boyfriend. At her country house? Yes. At the first one, uh, or was it Le Mazel? It was Le Mazel. It was Le Mazel. Yeah. Beautiful. Yes. I even slept in a big old bed there. Did you? Uh, a couple of the other people we've interviewed have said the same thing. Really? It seems as if some people look into their past routinely, and others never look into their past unless they're asked. Ah. Well, I, I, I dislike nostalgia. Do you? Very, very much. And But of course, as everyone else, I'm not without it. I, I have some, but I fight it. I don't, uh, I don't really enjoy it very much. Hmm? I think... Very seldom. They're lovely tr pleasures, treasures, and memories, but uh, it always brings some kind of sadness, and it, it also brings busyness that's not in the present day. I mean, I, you know, I love to do things. I love the present day. And the that's why I'm, try, I'm doing, I can't make films because I'm, I don't have the energy to make films, but I'm going to make a documentary. And, and uh, maybe it's uh, for, good, for the good that... Uh, uh, my died quite young. And you say that because? Well, because I, I have lost quite a lot of energy. She died around 70, she was 70? 68. 68, you see. And of course, I'm very happy to be alive. <laughs> but I have had good to say goodbye to my energy for, for a lot of things. And that's, she ha she didn't probably didn't know that. When I was 68, I, I made feature films, and I was alive and kicking. 
She also had many projects at once. Have yes. you always had many projects at once? I love that. I love that. Because never you never feel tired. I can understand. Was she a Gemini? Yes. 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 You see, that's an incredible... Uh, it's an incredible... I don't believe in these things, but of course I read them in the papers like everybody else. And, Je I mean, about nine friends, boys and girls, are Gemini around me. Her film editor was with us two days ago, and he is also a Gemini. It's, it's very special. I think, even if you don't believe in the stars, which you should, in a way, of course, but, I mean, in the way they're interpreted, uh, I think that... Uh, the fact of coming when it's a uh, time of strawberries and good weather and something, that must be, it must do something to you, to the baby and to the body and to the mother. Maybe that's it, I don't know. More important than the time of conception. I would say that, yes, I would say that. Okay. Mm. Can you tell us uh, anything about... Uh, your impression of her changing view of women and their situation and their status during that period I don't of time. even know if she was bisexual or not. I don't know much about her. Uh, she had a project uh, with Simone de Beauvoir. Whom I dislike. Is that right? Well, I don't. I don't, didn't know her, so it's very easy to dislike someone you don't know. I don't like her way of writing. But of course, she was very, very important. And what am I? Who am I to say to tell my opinion? But I can't help it, because I think she writes in a way that's very scholarly and dogmatic. And I love great writers, and I love writing. I have uh, as many books in the, in my bedroom, and I love reading. It's uh, and of course now I have plenty of time to read because I work less. I work half a day, and the other part of the day I read. And uh, I, I have such deep love for writing that I, I don't like uh, Simone de Beauvoir because probably she thinks well, but I can't stand her style, her style, her teacher style. I mean, I, whew, voila. She she was so impressed with my Zetterling's That's good. film, The Girls that she asked her to develop a seven-part television series based on the Wonder second And did, she, did Mai do it? They developed it, mm -hmm. but it uh, didn't get made by ah, Mai and Zetterlin. Ah. You know. mm. But she was, uh, she was interested in having Mai Zetterling uh -huh. do the series. Well, I, I, it's not, I'm, I'm a feminist, and I think she did a lot for women. It's not that part of her that I don't like. You understand what I say? It's her writing that I don't like. Of course. And uh, I've done what I could for women, but ve very little, we could say, very little. Except in my films, there is something. I mean, Georges Sand is the uh, 19th century epitome of feminism, isn't she? She was very free. She had children. She liked women and men. I mean incredibly brave about her attitude and in her work there's a great feeling of that so it's uh, both privately and publicly she was really a feminist mm. did you feel that way about Mai? I really don't know as much about Mai because I made a film about George Sand and so yes, I read everything about her yeah. but, but I think Mai must have been very useful for the cause <laughs> She mm. was embraced by the cause. Oh yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And can you tell us more about her her personality? Some anecdote? I'm afraid not. Besides the large handbag <laughs> and the hand mirror. Yeah. Did she... Was she a... She had terrific drive and she was a... a I Did you talk she, about fashion? Did she like fashion? Boof. Oof. I don't have a feeling she was very interested in fashion. It didn't show much in me. Because at that time, I was uh, very recently had been in fashion, and I, I think we never talked about it. She was interested about films, I think. Films, you talked about films. Yes, mostly. yes. 
It's true we had gay, happy times together. I mean, good times, positive times. And there was a, no problem in our relations.